Hi everyone, welcome to a new video from PyML Studio. In this video, I want to discuss the cross-attention connections between the encoder and decoder layers in the original transformer architecture. So let's get to it. As a quick recap, the original transformer was proposed in Attention is all you need paper for sequence-to-sequence -sequence translation tasks, such as language translation from a source language to a target language. For example, we feed an English sentence as source, and as output we get the translated sequence in French as target language. For transformers, the complete English sentence is fed to the encoder, and as output of the encoder we get the context representation of the English sentence. Then, we feed the partially complete French sentence in an autoregressive fashion to the decoder, which will predict the next word in French. So, in this video, we want to discuss the connections between the encoder and decoder layers in the transformer. First, we will see the connections in the original design, and then we will consider some alternative and uh, less effective connectivity schemes and discuss why these are not as effective as the original connectivity pattern. So, this discussion will help us understand the reasons for the original design. Before we start, I'd like to mention that in one of my previous videos on transformer architecture, I described the incorrect connections. So thankfully, one of the viewers caught that and pointed out that to me that according to the original paper, the output of encoder stack is passed to the decoder layers. So because of that, I want to apologize to my viewers and decided to uh, make this video to correct my mistake and clarify the connections. In the original transformer, the final output of the encoder stack is connected to each decoder layers through a cross-attention. The encoder output serves as a context representation of the input sentence in the source language. These representations are feature-rich and contain important information about the meaning and structure of the input sequence. Each decoder receives these representations and build query vectors from their own representations to attend to the representations that come from the encoder. This diagram shows cross-attention between encoder and decoder. Here, the query comes from the representation of the decoder, while the keys and values come from the encoder representation. Then, the query key matching, that is QK transpose, determines which tokens from the input se sequence the decoder must attend to. And softmax of QK transpose defines the weights. And finally, uh, this attention layer outputs a weighted sum of the encoder representations. Now we want to consider alternative connections and see why they are not as effective as the original design. Two alternatives are displayed here. In alternative A on the left, we connect each encoder layer to each decoder layer. On the first side, this may seem to be a good idea, but we'll see later on that uh, why this is not a good, good design. In alternative B, on the right, we only connect the final output of encoder uh, to only the first or the last decoder. And again, we'll see why this scenario B is also not as effective as uh, the original design. Let's dig deeper into the connection scheme of A, which connects each encoder to each decoder on the same level. This is very much similar to the skip connections in unit. But we should note that these are not skip connections, rather they are uh, cross-attention connections. So why this design is less effective than the original design? The main reason is that the output of early encoder layers are not fully transformed. Remember that each encoder layer with its attention and feedforward network essentially transforms the input into a new space. So passing these partially transformed representations from early encoders adds noise and redundant information to the decoder. This makes the job of decoder more difficult, since now it has to process a lot more information that are not fully processed. So that's why this design is not as effective as the original design. 
It's better to just let the decoder process the final output from encoder that's the fully processed representation. Now moving to alternative B, uh, so we established that, uh, so far we have established that uh, we must use the final output of encoder. Um, now the question is why should each decoder layer receives that representation? What if we only connect the final encoder output to the first or last decoder as shown here? And this is the alternative B. The reason why this design is bad is because it weakens the fusing of information from encoder to decoder. If we connect only uh, to the last decoder layer, we do not get that uh, deep interactions between encoder and decoder. Meanwhile, if we connect only to the first decoder layer, then the later decoder layers do not have direct access to the context of the source sentence. They only see what has already been processed by their preceding layer. In addition, having a single connection creates a bottleneck effect, where the burden of fusing information from source language to the target language is done through a single connection. So for these reasons, it's better to have more connections and pass the final output of the encoder to each individual decoder. So here is the full diagram of the encoder-decoder layers. The full sequence from the source language is passed to the encoder and the partially complete sequence from target is passed to the decoder. The encoder processes the input through all its layers and the final output of the entire encoder stack is then passed to each decoder layer for cross-attention. So I hope that uh, this clarifies the connections between encoder and decoder layers in Transformer. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned at PyML Studio for future videos as I'm going to shift gear and cover diffusion models. Thanks for watching.